There are many ways that you can share a single antenna with multiple radios. Yeah, many of them will get the job done. But today we talk about the best way and the preferred way that you can share one antenna with multiple scanners. Come up right now on Scanner School. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Welcome to Scanner School, where we teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and thanks for listening. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this podcast. If you're listening to us right now on a mobile device, just go ahead and click that subscribe button. That's all you have to do to make sure that next week's show is delivered right to your device and you will not miss a single episode. For those of you on a computer, just make sure you go to scannerschool.com slash podcast, and that's where you can get a list of all of our podcasts. Of course, you can also sign up for our email newsletter, and we remind you every week of the that week's uh, podcast. Again, if you go to scannerschool.com, right there on the front page is our email newsletter sign-up form. Now, before we get started on this week's podcast and how to split up an antenna on multiple receivers, I want to congratulate John D. Because John was the winner of the Scanner School's sponsored Scanner Master $100 gift card. So John plans on using that gift card to either purchase a base station scanner to go along with his BCD-436HP or maybe to get an antenna that he can put up in his attic. So on previous session, on session 28 of Scanner School, which you can listen to at scannerschool.com slash session 28, I talked about the Diamond Discone D130NJ as my next antenna and my um, antenna of choice when it comes to a new scanner radio setup. So if you want to know what I think about the Diamond D130NJ, go to scannerschool.com slash session 28. Or you could check out our resources page for other antennas I recommend if you're going to go portable or even mobile. So again, scannerschool.com slash resources. And again, while we're talking about it, don't forget if you spend $200 or more at Scanner Master and use coupon code SCANNERSCHOOL7, that's the number 7, you will get free shipping from Scanner Master. Again, $200 or more. So if you're thinking about buying something at Scanner Master, use our affiliate link scannerschool.com slash scanner master and by using that affiliate link of scannerschool.com slash scanner master we will earn a small commission or referral fee for the sale or whatever it is you buy at scanner master it's a great way to help support scanner school podcast and that comes at no additional cost to you so again scannerschool.com slash scanner master And finally, I want to remind everybody that this podcast is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. East Coast Pagers is one of my website properties. And East Coast Pagers is a Unication, Swiss phone, and Apollo pager dealer. So if you're looking for alphanumeric or one-way pagers, P25 pagers, check out eastcoastpagers.com slash scanner school for a little something special in your shopping cart if you pick up a Unication G1, G4, or G5 product. Again, eastcoastpagers.com slash scanner school. Okay, guys. So we're talking today about how to share your antenna with multiple receivers. Now, you can do that with a coaxial switch. And we talked about that a little bit last week when it came to lightning arresting. But what if you want to use multiple receivers at the exact same time and only have one antenna? Because, you know, some people like me who have a little bit of a disease, we have multiple radios going at the same time. And there's many reasons for that. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a future session. Because right now, I really want to stick to just the hardware. And what we use for something like that is a multi-coupler. Now, a multi-coupler is a really fancy splitter. And they kind of fall under two categories here. There's a passive multi-coupler, which has no gain on the output ports, and may introduce a little bit of loss. And then you have active multi-couplers, which replaces the loss, may actually give you a little bit of extra gain, and it has to plug into a voltage source, usually 12 volts DC, and what that allows it to do is basically turn on a little 
pretty amplifier that's inside the multi-coupler. Again, that allows you to recover the loss of splitting up the signal across multiple ports. So why do we recommend using a multi-coupler? Well, you use a multi-coupler because you want to isolate the output ports. You don't want multiple scanners to be able to talk to each other across the ports or across the output ports. That's what the isolation does. It basically mimics the direct connection from the antenna to the back of the scanner. And as far as that scanner is concerned, that's the only device that's plugged into the antenna path, thanks to the multi-coupler. So if you remember a couple of weeks back, we spoke about preamplifiers, and I used an example of a buddy of mine that sources a live feed to one of my websites, and he was using a cable vision or a cable preamplifier, which was a splitter with a preamplifier built into it. And what was happening on his scanner feeds was he had two radios set up, two separate computers. One was a fireground scanner, one was a dispatch scanner. And he kept complaining that he's hearing the dispatch radio when he listens to the fire ground feed, but not vice versa. And he couldn't figure it out why. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, maybe it's got to be due to his line input and he's using a single computer. But he explained to me that his dispatch radio and computer are in a completely separate room from his fire ground radio and fire ground computer that sources the audio to the live feed server. So I asked him what he was using, and he says, oh, I got a one antenna, and I have a multi-coupler, and it's going to different, you know, different rooms, so I don't understand why it's not working. So I asked him to take a picture, and it turns out that his, and I'm using quotes here, his multi-coupler was actually a, like I said, a cable preamplifier with a bunch of output ports. So what was essentially happening here was when one scanner was receiving, it was talking or interfering with the other scanner and the audio was being then received on the secondary scanner. There was no isolation between the two radios and because there was no isolation he had a issue with the second radio on his network. Exactly why we use multi-couplers. That does not happen or its likelihood of that happening is extremely slim when you use a multi-coupler. So again, what are the benefits of using a multi-coupler? Well, if you haven't guessed by now, one antenna, multiple receivers, there's the increased isolation between scanners, which limits your interference between them, and active multi-couplers have a small preamp inside that will bring back in the loss of having a split signal. So now you may be scratching his head going, well, why am I going to pay for a multi-coupler if I could just use a splitter, a standard off-the-shelf splitter that I can get off the weekend warrior place like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever it is that's in your neck of the woods? If you've ever looked at a cable TV splitter, the first thing you'll want to notice on it is that it has a frequency range on it. It has a cutoff. It is made for the cable TV frequencies that are in use. Maybe it cuts off at 100 megahertz, so anything lower like 46 megahertz, 39 megahertz might be cut off. And they also only go so high. But the key to look at when you look at a cable TV splitter is not only do they have F connectors on it, which requires you now to step down your connection to F, but there is loss on there. A typical two-port cable TV splitter has 3 dB loss on both legs. You could have 6 dB loss on four legs, or maybe even one port might even have 10 dB loss. One may have 3 dB loss, one may have 6 dB loss. Different ports may have different losses on them. And again, it's a networked type of splitter where there's no isolation between the output ports, so one radio can interfere with another. Another common way of putting the scanners in the same antenna path is by using a BNC T connector or an NT connector or something like that that just allows you to take the signal and split it using a T connector. Now, again, I have been guilty of doing that, but it's been in really a rare situation that I go forward and do something like that. Um, typically, if I'm taking something out and I'm running a demo on something or I got something I'm just bench testing, then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll fire up a T-connector. So the T-connector then changes the impedance of the coaxial line. Now, again, it, it changes it a little bit because you're not using you know long connections, or you shouldn't be. 
uh, in my case, typically about uh, a foot or two of jumper on, on the T. But again, you're not isolating the scanners at all. So one scanner may cause another scanner to receive something that's not there or not be able to receive at all. So again, that's why we stay away from the design of using T connectors on BNC. Now again, if you don't know it's an issue, people just use them. It's, it's very common to use T connectors, but it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. Now again, in this antenna series right now, we're taking our little trip down to coax. I'm explaining to you really the preferred way and the best way to do any type of hookup to minimize your losses, which then will increase your reception gain. So there is a way of doing things, and then there is the preferred way. And installing multi-couplers is definitely the preferred way of hooking up your multiple receiver station to a single antenna. Okay, so now let's talk about the placement of the multi-coupler. The multi-coupler will be centrally located in your receivers. So when you bring down your coax through the house, you'll bring it up, I guess, wherever your scanner station is, maybe you know, on, a, on a wall behind a desk or behind wherever your scanner rack is. That's where you'll want to place your multi-coupler. If you need power to it for an active multi-coupler, of course, you want to make sure that you're in range of an outlet to plug in the multi-coupler. So then what ends up happening is basically you'll, you'll plug in your antenna coax to the bottom of the multi-coupler, and then each one of the scanners will then get its own dedicated port on a multi-coupler. Common multi-couplers come in two, four, or eight ports. Now, I have seen other companies out there that do offer a 16-port multi-coupler. You can also split or daisy-chain your multi-coupler. You can easily take a two-channel multi-coupler and feed it off to two eight-channel multi-couplers. You could take a four-port multi-coupler and feed it off to other multi-couplers if you wanted to because the gain is always being replaced. Okay. So what do you want to look at also when installing a multi-coupler besides power and its proximity to your antenna feed line and where your coax or your uh, jumpers are going to be? But there also is a ground lug on the multi-coupler. And it is good practice to also ground your multi-coupler to your station's ground. And we'll talk about station grounding in a future session of the Scanner School podcast. So now let's say you're going out and you're going to buy a multi-coupler. Now you can start doing researches to see what's out there for multi-couplers. What do you want to look for when you are buying one? Well, first of all, you want to look at your connections. The typical connection on a multi-coupler is BNC. Active multi-couplers require a voltage in DC. And I do recommend an active multi-coupler, again, because it will replace the losses that are introduced because you're splitting up the signal. So if you're looking for an active multi-coupler, you're going to want something that has a wide enough band split for whatever it is that you're listening to. So the multi-coupler that I use, the Stridesberg MCA208M, is a VHF-UHF multi-coupler that goes from 25 megahertz all the way up to 1 gigahertz. This multi-couple will be linked to in the resources page at scannerschool.com slash resources and also in today's session notes at scannerschool.com slash session 33. There are also multi-couplers out there that only do VHF or some that only do UHF. Maybe there are some out there that only do the 700, 800 megahertz public safety band. So you may want to make sure when you go out and you buy your multi-coupler that you pick up one that has the correct band split for your needs. So what do I recommend when it comes to multi-couplers? Well, it really depends on if you're looking for four port or eight port. Again, we've touched on the, the term Stridesberg and that's the multi-coupler that I use. I have an eight port multi-coupler, eight port Stridesberg multi-coupler in my shack right now that feeds eight scanners. And yes, it is running on eight scanners. I have maxed out that multi-coupler and I am actually looking at part picking up a secondary active multi-coupler and another eight port Stridesburg multi-coupler as well. So I can extend out my scanning setup over here. So if you want to know what I recommend, check out our resources page at Scanner School dot com slash resources in that resources page i have all the equipment that we've talked about on the last couple of podcasts from the antenna the coax the preamplifiers and uh again if you just want to go straight out and just buy a multi-coupler you go to scannerschool.com slash 
multi-coupler. But again, take a look at the resources page, scannerschool.com slash resources. All right, guys. So before we split for the week, I want to say thank you so much for our current Patreon supporters, Mark Beebe, Kenneth Fowler, and MT Bono for your continued support. Patreon is a great way to help support the Scanner School podcast and everything that it is that we do here at Scanner School. And you can help support us on an ongoing monthly pledge for as little as a dollar a month. Now, if you pledge $5 or more a month, that will give you early access to the podcast. If Patreon isn't your cup of tea, we have other ways that you can support the Scanner School podcast, either by shopping on Amazon or PayPal donation or other uh, resources that are out there that may not cost you anything that will help support the Scanner School podcast. So again, scannerschool.com slash support is where you would go to help support the Scanner School project. All right, guys. So that's it for this week on multi-couplers. Now, again, if you want to see the A-port multi-coupler from Stridesburg that I am using in my shack right now, and I've been in love with it for years, I don't even know how many years it has been since I installed it, but I could say, honestly say I use it every day. Go to scannerschool.com slash resources or check out today's session, scannerschool.com slash session 33. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter, scannerschool.com slash Twitter, Facebook, scannerschool.com slash Facebook, and our Facebook community, which has a pretty active user base now at this time. We're over 600 members in our Facebook group, and we talk about anything scanning related. Scannerschool.com slash Facebook group. And don't forget, too, to check out our new YouTube channel, Scannerschool.com slash YouTube. So, again, I want to congratulate John D. on our Scanner School Scanner Master $100 gift card contest. And we will have another contest coming up probably by the end of the year. So again, until next week, I want to say thank you so much for listening to the Scanner School Podcast, where we teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and we will catch you next week, 73. Thanks for listening to the Scanner School Podcast. Be sure to visit www.scannerschool.com to access the show notes and bonus content.